Francia? Yes. Yes. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, yes, as, as you said, it is, it, it, this whole session is a teaser and, and uh, hoping and wishing that, you, that we will be able to go to Hyrtiala all together. And uh, so we will be talking about Hyrtiala from, from different aspects. So we'll start with education and uh, I, will, I will tell some general aspects, then we'll be here student, teacher and, and uh, assistant um, views as well and uh, then, then also something about the research that's being done in Hyrtiala. But as I am the first one in this session, I will tell you briefly about the history of the station and, and some basic information. Um, then I will talk about the history of, of the courses in, in Hyrtiala, how they have evolved over time. And I will end with uh, our research-oriented intensive courses that have become quite popular, and, and we have we have made some studies on, on learning on our of, on our courses as well. So Hyytiela is in uh, it is still in in uh, southern Finland. Here you see the location. Just a moment, I will turn my pointer on. So here it is. Uh, some of you who have been to Finland might know Tampere, which is one of our larger cities. So it is about 60 kilometers from, from Tampere and uh, altogether about 230 kilometers from Helsinki. It is really in the middle of the forest. Um, as the name Forestry Field Station might suggest. And it has a pretty lengthy history in, in Finnish terms, so it takes all, back all the way to 1910, so 110 years ago, when uh, the Finnish government assigned some state-owned forests around this region uh, to practice area of, of forestry students, and uh, already that year the first students came there to practice as part of their studies. Uh, at that time there was not any, any um, buildings yet there, you can see some of the original buildings in, 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 in this photo here. Those were built a couple of years later. Um, by the way, some of you who know Finnish history might, might wonder how, how come Finnish had a government uh, back in 1910 when Finland was still part of the Russian Empire. But it was, it was autonomous uh, duchy uh, at, at, at that time, so there was really a Finnish government. Then, and this was still, I mean, 1917 was the year of independence from Russia. Uh, so this was still, still that period uh, when the first building were built there, wooden ones, of course, uh, to celebrate the 25th uh, anniversary, uh, an arboretum was planted, and it is still there. Uh, 1959, um, some, let's say, the first non-wooden buildings, the brick buildings, the research institute, which still, all these buildings are still there. Um, late 70s, uh, more accommodation buildings, a new uh, restaurant or canteen, and a machine hall. And um, uh, why we as atmospheric scientists are a lot in Hyytiala nowadays is, is that 25 years ago, 1995, uh, the Smear2 station to study uh, forest ecosystem atmosphere relations was built and, and started. Uh, all the measurements, continuous measurements that are still running in the beginning of 1996. And we were supposed to have a great party to celebrate 25th anniversary of the Smear2 station there in, in August this year, but uh, which we have just just um, decided that it will be postponed, but we will have uh, some virtual events, of course, instead. Back in the old days, uh, this picture is from 1916. Uh, the teaching was, well, it is still partly happens in the forest, especially for the forest students, but it was more practical work than nowadays. Um, but the research, and in, in that sense also research-based education started uh, when the institute was completed in late 50s, as I mentioned. So it is a forestry field station. Um, 
and uh, working under the uh, Faculty of Forestry and Agriculture of the University of Helsinki. However, uh, the smear station, this, uh, this uh, uh, atmosphere ecosystem uh, relationship station working there has, has moved to, to work under first on the Department of Physics when atmospheric sciences were part of, uh, part of the physics and uh, now as we have our own institute it is working under the Institute for Atmospheric and Earth System Research. The station works throughout the year there's research going on all the time, the continuous measurements, uh, campaigns, uh, all, all kinds of research, both in, in, in the forest and in, in the station. There are university courses. Emphasis is uh, in the summertime. There's quite a big capacity. In the summertime, there's accommodation for up to 200 people. In, in the wintertime, these old wooden buildings are not used for accommodation. So, so in the wintertime, it can hold, host up to 100 people. There are different kinds of seminars, workshops, even conferences there throughout the year. And uh, all of this is taken care of uh, care by the permanent staff, which is about 20 persons, half of them approximately doing research and, and uh, running the research station and, and the uh, small laboratories there. And half of them taking care of administration and uh, and uh, maintenance and uh, and kitchen and then so on. In the picture you see Antti Otila who is the station manager. Hopefully we will get to meet him when we go to Hytiela. Here's another aerial photo of, of, of the station from a slightly different angle than the one I, I showed yesterday. Um, so we have the old, the original wooden buildings here in this area, still all in use and uh, the more modern buildings here. Here we have the institute, where we have the research activities and offices, and then the accommodation buildings and then canteen is the A building and B and C buildings are here, and machine halls here. There are also two saunas, of course, on, on the uh, shore of the lake. It's Lake Kuivajärvi, uh, dry lake. It's not dry of water, it's dry of fish. Um, uh, but it's it's very nice for swimming throughout the year. The smear smear two station actually is is not visible in in this picture. It's to the right, but there are some more buildings and then a quite high mast there. And hopefully we will be able to go there and see. And uh, Ilona later on in in this session will will tell a little bit about the research in Hytiela. But now let's let's move on to the courses. So the most traditional courses in Hytiala are these ones that started already in, in 1910. Uh, the almost summer long courses for forestry bachelor students. Um, and, uh, and some shift in, in, the, in the education in Hytiala started as late as, as in 1980s, when they started to have research-based forestry courses. And, uh, and uh, from our perspective, the critical change in kind of in the multidisciplinary sense uh, or interdisciplinary sense happened in 1995 when this uh, measurement station, atmosphere, forest interaction measurement station started 25 years ago when there was a multidisciplinarity then and added on, on, on the courses first, including mainly forest sciences and physical sciences, but later on also meteorology, biology, um, chemistry and so on. And uh, when we started our first English taught master's program about 15 years ago, uh, these courses became also very international and we started to get, get, get students from all around the world uh, on the courses. Here you see uh, our advanced courses. One feature of our courses that we call them either um, basic courses, intermediate courses or advanced courses. And the basic and in intermediate courses are, are for, for bachelor students mainly. And but the advanced courses are both for master and doctoral students. So typically on, on, on our courses we have both master and, and PhD students. On, on this table we, we have the six courses that we are running there uh, every year, most of them, some of them every second year. Um, and these are these interdisciplinary uh, courses, so I have excluded the pure forest science courses. There are quite a lot of them there as well. On top of this, we have some 
uh, so-called ad hoc courses, courses that we are giving just one time or a few times, but not on a continuous basis. And we can divide them on, on this, this kind of, this is a field and experimental courses that are kind of the traditional when you go to, to, a, to a field station. So you will work with experiments that you have available. Uh, then on the, on the other end, uh, you have theories and, and, and models. And we are giving those courses just because of the surroundings. It's, it's a very nice, nice uh, place to have courses uh, in an intensive man manner. And uh, kind of connecting these, we have this data analysis courses. And uh, I will now talk about these because these are, I would say, the most popular and most well known of our courses. And we have also um, done some research about learning, learning on these courses. And uh, I believe I have shown this picture to you in, in the Moscow training last month. Um, and I'm now showing it again. I am no noticing that I don't have much time left, so I will, I will not go so much into details. I am just noting. Uh, by the way, this paper has now been uh, published and, and you, can, you can find it, find it on, on WMO. So the span of, of our typical course is 10 to 12 days. So in practice, two weeks. And uh, you see different colored activities here, like lectures on black presentations uh, by students on, on yellow, uh, group work, blue, uh, excursion, green. It's quite important to have some, some free time in the middle. It's a long course. And then some social activities with, with this, uh, with this uh, reddish color. And um, when you look, look, it's it's brown and blue that are that are uh, dominating here. It means that social activities and group work that are the main components on our courses. Not many lectures. Um, on this, this, this was a real course that we gave a couple of years ago. Uh, we kind of might call lectures an example of vertical teaching when somebody is, is delivering and, and students are, are receiving information. So not many lectures. Um, horizontal learning, meaning that uh, both students and teachers on the course take, take both role of a learner and instructor on, in, in, in this course environment. And this is, this is pedagogically very interesting. So also the teachers are learning. I think this happens on, on every course. It's just not admitted that, that teaching is actually a very, very nice way of learning. But this is also, teachers are also actively learned, uh, actively taught by, by uh, students. This is maybe the difference. And uh, the activities uh, during the course, they, they vary between kind of asking, learning, and, and uh, seeking for, for new information. And uh, not going into details, please let's read the paper for details. Um, also, we can note and have noted that, that uh, this Tuckman uh, group dynamic uh, pattern is valid on these courses. There is a, a stage of forming the group, storming, kind of brainstorming, norming, and most of the time performing, and, and then in the end, adjoining. And all of this happening within 10 to 12 days. Um, just in the end, very shortly, uh, some, some benefits this kind of uh, course concept uh, offers for education. So group work where we have both students and, and uh, kind of senior scientists, so at least more advanced students as supervisors. This facilitates integration of students to the research community. And, and this is really also a feedback that we get from the students. Especially if we have diverse groups and, and students from different levels, like master and PhD students in the same groups. Uh, we have learned, and there are also, also other studies, that an optimal group size of, of this kind of intensive working, which doesn't have to be so strictly organized. Uh, the group can, can agree easily uh, when it's small, four to six students, one to two supervisors. Also, uh, what st both students and, and the teachers uh, slash supervisors um, find very motivating is, is that we use real research questions and real data to try to find answers to these this questions. This is also pedagogically very interesting that uh, 
uh, we might not even know from in, in the beginning of the course if the, the question that we have set for the course is, is kind of valid or reasonable, but we will find out. Usually there, there, are, there is interesting, uh, there are interesting results on this kind of courses. Um, the social interaction is very important and especially when we're in the middle of, of the forest, everybody is, is together basically 24 hours a day. Um, the social interaction becomes very, very important. It boosts integration, also builds new connections that on interdisciplinary courses are also then interdisciplinary connections. And uh, this horizontal learning principle when everybody is, has two roles, le learner and, and instructor, and in, especially in multidisciplinary groups, this this uh, this really fosters collaboration between between different disciplines. I think I have used my time. Yes, even two minutes extra. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Carl.